Hi there. The purpose of this video is to highlight some of the firmware feature enhancements that have been made to the 4, 5, and 6 series mixed signal oscilloscopes from Tektronix. Just as a reminder, Tech's been releasing firmware updates for these scopes on about a once per quarter cadence ever since the 5 series was released at the end of 2017. I'll post a link in the description below where you can download the firmware for each of these scopes. So what we're showing you here is firmware updates for the October release of these scopes. And these are just some of the highlights. They include some display options like providing variable font sizes, a polar cursor readout in the XY and XYZ modes, a new save waveform option beyond the .wfm and .csv file format. You can now save into a MATLAB file format and a new 8B, 10B, and NRZ decode and search options that can be purchased. Okay, so let's take a live example now on my MSO64 6 series scope. And I wanna capture uh, an example here uh, using one of the features we didn't talk about on the last slide, which is our new waveform mass testing capabilities. So, uh, mass testing, of course, gets used in a variety of different applications from high speed serial to, you know, just validating that a particular waveform is steady over thousands and thousands of acquisitions. So that's what we're going to do in this particular case. We're looking at a, about a 100 megahertz clock signal on the scope. And uh, you can see the, the especially the rising and falling edges of this signal are dithering about um, and that's primarily because of the uh, spread spectrum qualities of this particular clock. So you might see this sort of clock in uh, the power supply uh, in order to reduce the EMI emissions of that particular power supply. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on one of the upper echelons of this particular clock. So we'll use our draw and box zoom down here and draw over one of these corners, just like so. So now if I go back to that draw and box button and double click on it, you'll see that it brings up this menu that allows me to select whether I want to zoom on a specific area that I drew, uh, like I just showed, a, apply a visual trigger, uh, which we've highlighted in other videos, or add a mass testing segment. So I'm going to select that one. We're going to draw two different mass segments here. Uh, say one on maybe this rising edge on the outside of the waveform and one on the uh, inside edge of this, again, rising waveform. And just as we had with visual trigger, if I click on any of these box edges, you can see I can draw these corners to be much more specific from adding in additional uh, box edges and corners, like what I just did there. Um, I can also you know, flip these boxes around uh, and rotate them like this. So it gives me a lot of flexibility in, you know, just how how specific I want this particular box to be to be drawn on the screen. Now the other thing you'll notice is when when I started drawing those boxes, this mass test badge showed up in the upper right hand corner. So if I double click on that, you'll see it gives me a couple of different options for setting up the test. The first is selecting what source I want these segments to be applied to. In this case, we're going to select channel one. It tells, it asks me how many waveforms I want to acquire during the test. Um, in this case, we'll stick with a thousand as default. And then it even tells me how, or it even asks me how many waveforms we want to cross into this mass segment area uh, before it's considered a failure. So in this case, you know, if any of these particular segments cross in, we'll, we'll consider the, the segment a failure. And I'll also check this checkbox for specifying the segment hits in the badge, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. So now if I turn on the mask badge, you'll see that it immediately starts, starts the test and the waveform count uh, starts rising here. You're seeing that waveforms passing through this segment that are considered failures are sort of kept in kind of like an infinite persistence sort of trace mode. And then once we reach a thousand waveforms, you'll see how those failures have stacked up in the, into the segments. So we've uh, hit the first segment 105 times, we've hit the second segment 480, uh, 458 times, and 
for a total of 563 hits. Now, the other thing that we can do with this is go back in and click on this act on event button. So this is again, another feature that we've added um, with the mass testing capabilities and it sort of breaks breaks further open the capabilities of our of our save on capabilities with this scope. So now, you know, whenever a particular failure is highlighted, I can I can select whether I want to save a screen capture by checking this button, uh, by clicking this button here, mass test failure on screen capture. I can ask it to save a waveform for me, or I can say I want you to stop, you know, acquiring new acquisitions. And you can see there's a lot of other things that can be acted on, uh, like say if a trigger event is is captured or if a measurement limit is is captured, uh, you can apply those same three um, save functions here. And then the bottom screen shows where uh, I exactly I want to save and at what file form I, I want to save screen capture, so on and so forth. So again, this is some of the new capabilities that are available on the four, five, and six series mixed signal oscilloscope from Tektronix. If you'd like more uh, information on this particular uh, firmware update, please contact your local sales representative from Tektronix. Thank you.